It does not have to be a new year, a new you. It just has to be a healthier you in the new year, you guys. Make sure you check down below in the description box where you can find the links to TLC products, including the IASOT, the Nutriverse, the Life Drops, the Resolution Drops. There are just so many things there to help you in burning fat and staying healthy. There's even the new immune tea, which I'm going to order. So I can't wait to like, you know, try that. And I hope they get the sea moss back. But I do love the sea moss from Men in Ocean. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a commercial. Yes, okay? Get those TLC products for me and do not forget that my biggest life change has been through Kiara Lachey, Team Lachey, If You Can Move.com. You guys get cute little outfits from Paige and Amari. You also check out Just Move Supplements because she is helping us with the energy, okay? This is the energy supplement. Love it, okay? Just got my protein. Gonna get me some after I work out. So, yeah. Yeah, y'all. Down below in the description box, support, support, support. So you guys are always asking me where I get my glasses from. So I thought I would finally give y'all a real little ad, okay? Firmo, I can't see, bitch. Okay, I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. These are my new Firmo glasses here. Super, super cute, right? They are a prescription because I'm like totally blind. And I got these matte ones that I think are really dope. And I felt like they would go good with the fact that I no longer have hair. You know what I'm saying? But either way, you guys can use my link and give me credit and get you some glasses from Fermo. Come on in, come on in, come on in, not come on in, not come. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead. Hey, everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram and let's get into the video. Hey everybody, what's up? I had to give y'all a little pre, little pre show be, little pre show be. Okay, when I be in there, be bopping on some on some old school shit. I've been listening to Frankie Beverly and Mays all day. Okay, while I'm alone, I don't like being alone. I am no baby, being alone. I can't stand it. I'm being alone. Oh, baby. Listen, I'm sorry. I had to give y'all a little juke right quick. Okay. Hey, you guys. What's up? How y'all doing today? I hope you doing good today. I hope you doing good today. Listen. All right, y'all, I'm feeling good for the moment and you have to enjoy the moments when you don't feel like crap, okay? Because I got food poisoning and I feel as if it is persisting because I didn't realize that, you know, once you threw up, you still kind of had food poisoning. So you should probably like not drink. You should probably eat like real toned down foods. That's not what I did. I felt fine. So I ate as I normally would. And now every time I eat, my stomach hurts. So currently, I am on soup and vegetables only. <laughs> but I'm feeling good right now. And I want to stay right there. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. My dog is outside doing the most. Okay. I'm really going to have to get him some actual like weed treats or something because the CBD stuff don't be hitting as hard no more. Okay. He, he out there barking at the air because the neighbors is doing stuff, doing the most. Okay. You know, so you can't do broccoli and cheddar. That's dairy. You can't do dairy. All right. You got to keep it vegetables and broth. Okay, well, you got stomach issues. You can't add no dairy in there. Okay, you just can't. Um, you got to ease back in. Yeah, I didn't ease back. I didn't ease back. I thought since I threw up, I was fine. Like, <laughs> I'm one of them people that, like, I'm so used to, like, throwing up being the answer to whatever the problem was. Wait, where you get uh, CBD for the dog? I got a yapper, too. Ooh, we have a spot here. We have a CBD. Like, they sell CBD all over the place in New Orleans. Uh, but there's a CBD spot here on Manhattan that I go to. Um, You're looking better each week, Bondi. Thank you, Kai. I appreciate that. I am trying, okay? This is me working on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all should take time throughout our day where we do something that is about us. 
okay? As a person, our overall betterment. You know what I'm saying? Like tomorrow before the ladies first panel that's on Nisi's channel this week, I'm going to go and get my nails done and I'm going to change this color. It is, it's time to go. And then I have to schedule my pedicure, which has to be done at a different time because it happens at a different location and you got to get appointments for the black girls. OK, for the black girls, you can't just show up. You can't just walk in. You got to have an appointment. <laughs> no, actually, the more I spend time outside, the lighter my hair gets. I, I, I've been working out outside. So now I'm tanning and I am the color I was as a child <laughs> and in my early 20s. OK, um, now that I've been out in the sun. Um, I go outside to work out. It's, it's my way of keeping up with the heat. Um, Y'all, like before we get into the topics today, like I, I'm thinking of, I don't need to join the big boy challenge. That's the thing. Like I don't need to, but I want to. I'm not going to lie. She did a little test run. Kiera Lachey did a little test run for this big boy challenge and, you know, just showing the workouts. And I was like, I want to do this, this snapback with her. I really, really do. And I miss working out with her, like, you know, um, all the time. Cause like there was a minute where she was doing live so much. I, I wish there was a way for her to do the lives, um, only for the people that pay for her gym because I, I miss the, the interaction of it all. Um, but lately I've just been jumping rope and then doing like one or two workouts from her or, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Muscle. <clears throat> Yes, working outside, it, working out outside is a beast. It really is, especially because it's so hot here. So, you know, sometimes I have to give myself the breaks. I have to take breaks because if not, <laughs> you might pass out because it's like 90 degrees out here and we in the shade. <laughs> it's bad. Um, but yes, okay, I'm glowy for it because of the facial. Okay, oh my God. I found this really, really nice like Black-owned massage place close by. So excited about going back there this week. I did a test run and did 50 minutes. Ashamed of myself. I don't know why I did that to myself. I'm normally an 80 to 110 minute massage person. I don't usually do 50 minutes. I haven't done 50 minutes since I was, a, since I was like broke, like broke, broke, like not this broke, the broke I was in my early 20s. <laughs> the broke when you only making $10 an hour. Okay, you can't afford this shit. Can't afford to be dropping $200 on a motherfucking massage, you know, twice in a month. Shit. My body hurt. <laughs> Rub me. Love me. You know what I'm saying? Yes, cross rope is life. Jumping rope is everything. Like, I usually just walk for 30 minutes, but not them with add jump. Listen, <clears throat> for everybody that wants to jump rope, when I tell y'all, seeing y'all jump rope, seeing y'all videos, like, I got a home girl that I went to high school with, okay? And it's so funny, uh, that she, you know, we kind of keep up with each other on social media. Because when we was in school together, y'all, I didn't like a lot of people. A lot of people didn't like me, but she was one of my favorite people. And uh, she posted her jumping rope. And she was like, I've been inspiring her to, like, start jumping rope. And, like, other, you know, it's it's crazy to me when people who know me from social media tell me that. But when people who I know, who I grew up with, tell me stuff like that, it, it always, like, sends me. So it makes me feel, like, you know, really good about it. Child, you got a head and massage envy. I have seen the first part of the of the vlog. I haven't seen the rest of it. I have to watch the rest of it though. But he is making me want to. Uh, Q is definitely making me want to go to Tullam. Um, <clears throat> and I wasn't even trying to go over there because I don't like being by all y'all little young ass wild ass people. Like I'm trying to go on vacation, like rest and fuck. Like that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know what y'all doing, but you know y'all be over there wilding and doing the most. Y'all won't be out late, bitch. I'm tired. I'm gonna sleep as I have sex. So leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> so I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear what's going on. You know what I'm saying at your party. You know what I'm saying. So I I don't know. <clears throat> well, you know you can pay as you go with the big boy challenge. It is three hundred and ninety nine dollars, but they're giving away a car. It is six months of challenges. It's not just one challenge. Um, so it's like the whole rest of the year. <clears throat> and that's why I want to do it. Cause I feel like if I did it, by the time I get to the end of the year, I would have reached my overall goal and I haven't reached my overall goal yet, but I'm in a good place. I'm happy with where I am. I, I, I love my body at this point as well, but there's a place I'm trying to get. Okay. 
Um, but I, I, I'm glad that I was able to inspire people to, you know, get fit and work out and, you know, somebody inspired me. So to, to pass that on to other people, I feel like that's a great thing because if y'all, if y'all know, like I know once you start doing it and then you do it, doing it on a regular basis, especially cardio, you feel so much better. <laughs> you feel so much better. Like you're not as tired, you know what I'm saying? You're not as sluggish. Like, your body doesn't, you know, hurt as much. You can do more. You can breathe better. You know what I'm saying? And if you smoke, doing cardio would definitely like help you not have a cough. Just saying. Um. Oh, okay, 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 say okay, okay. Shit, I'm mad. I'm, I'm listen. I'm feeling left out. Y'all was doing a Zoom, a Zoom meeting, bitch. I'm sad. Ugh. It's like I just bought my dream car. So, and then I don't know if I'm gonna do like the whole six months. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was kind of like, I, you know, I would rather like pay as I go. Um, and also I know I'm not gonna win. You know what I'm saying? So it don't even, you know. But the workouts, you know, you do it for the workouts. But it's 400 of y'all in the room. I have talked about uh, working out in miscellaneous things long enough. I think we can finally get into the topics. OK, um, let's go ahead and start with Simone Biles' brother. OK, <clears throat> so because I don't think I saved this one. I didn't. And I want to put up a picture because this was a last minute. Addition, addition. Okay, use the proper words, Brittany. Don't make up words for everything. There's a word for it. Don't make it up. Um, you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get yourself together. Okay, so Simone Biles' brother. A mm, lot going on here. According to reports, yesterday an Ohio judge dropped the murder charges along with other charges that were filed against Tevin Biles Thomas, 26, the older brother of U.S. Olympic gymnast Simone Biles, 24. The judge granted a Rule 29 motion for judgment of acquittal by the defense for lack of evidence. This ruling not only dismissed Biles Thomas murder charges, but also acquitted him of voluntary manslaughter and felonious assault charges. As previously reported, in 2019, Biles Thomas was held on a $1 million bond after being accused of murdering three people and injuring two others in Cleveland during a 2018 New, Year, New Year's Eve party. He was charged with six counts of murder, five counts of felonious assault, three counts of voluntary manslaughter, and one count of perjury. Biles Thomas ultimately pleaded not guilty to the triple murder charges. Following the judge's ruling, the courtroom reportedly became chaotic as a woman charged at Simone Biles' brother. The unnamed woman who was restrained by sheriff deputies has been identified as the mother of one of the victims of the tragic New Year's Eve party. After her brother's arrest in 2019, Simone Biles released a statement addressing the situation via her Twitter. She wrote, my heart aches for everyone involved, especially for the victims and their families. There is nothing that I can say that will heal anyone's pain, but I do want to express my sincere condolences to everyone affected by this terrible tragedy. I ask everyone to please respect my privacy, my family's privacy, as we deal with our pain. XO. She added, still having a hard time processing last week's news. Okay. Tevin Biles Thomas and his famous sister were both raised by their grandparents as their mother was reportedly has reportedly had drug issues. Mm. So I'm not exactly sure. The Jasmine brand is not telling me what I need to be told about this story. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little search and, and we're going to find out. We're going to find out. What, what it is that, that they believe he did, because I'm trying to understand how somebody um, is accused of killing three people and they got off because there was no evidence. Like, I need to understand what's happening here. So this is from CNN. After a mistrial was declared last month in the murder trial of Tevin Biles Thomas, the brother of Simone Biles, a judge in Ohio acquitted Biles Thomas of the charges against him. OK. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to give me the deets on what went down. 
Uh, okay, Cleveland police had identified Biles Thomas as the shooter. He has pleaded not guilty to the charges against him. Following the judge's ruling, a person in the gallery charged towards Biles Thomas. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we know, we know. Uh, was he in the car? Like, was he with? The, I need somebody to explain to me why y'all think he did it. Like, is it because he looked like the person? Like, child, I wish somebody would explain it. See, and they're not even explaining why police thought it was him. Like, is it just because he was a black man in the area? Like, what, what was the lack of evidence? Like, how did y'all even um, feel like he was the one who did it? It sounds like somebody, you know, opened fire on a party. Like they, you know, they did a drive by on a party. Uh, oh gosh. The lady was yelling, you killed my baby. Do y'all, I, do I have to play that? I don't want to play that. Um, yeah, take me to the original story, please. Okay, the brother of Olympic gymnast Simone Biles has been charged with murder in a New Year's Eve shooting that left three people dead, people confirms. Tevin Biles, 24 of Cleveland, is charged with murder and all of those other charges by Cleveland police. According to the statement, the shooting took place at a party at 11.30 p.m. December 31st, 2018, an uninvited group entered the home and an altercation ensued i'm like y'all couldn't dance y'all can have a dance off nigga this sounds like a dance off situation between the group and the guest gunfire broke out and multiple people were shot so not a drive-by but y'all came in there busting three of whom died okay so the De delvante johnson to sean banks and Devon Gibson were killed. Police conducted an investigation and identified Tevin Biles Thomas as a shooter in the incident. Um, a shooter, okay. Jail records from the Liberty County Sheriff's Office in Georgia show Biles Thomas bond had not been set at the time. Uh, they had him in custody at 3.30 p.m. I was trying to see, so I guess just because he was with that group of people, that was it. See that? Yeah, that's not enough evidence. <laughs> that's not enough evidence. All right. It doesn't seem like enough evidence to me. Like just because he was with the group of people, that doesn't mean he shot anybody. I'm just trying to say if they see anything else on Tuesday. Oh, child, the county common pleas court judge Joan Sinberg granted the motion, noting that none of the eyewitnesses in the New Year's Eve incident could identify Biles Thomas as the shooter. Child. Yeah, he was just with them people. And you talking about you killed my baby. Yeah. All right. Calm, calm. I understand, ma'am. Emotions are high. It's a, it's a stressful situation. I get it. Um. I forgot about that story, you guys. I totally forgot about that story until it popped up on Instagram today. And it's the, basically the video of the lady trying to attack him in court. Meanwhile, Simone Biles is breaking all the records in life, okay? Breaking all of the records, okay? Smashing all of the records to smithereens in the Olympics, okay? doing very well. There's even rumors that they're supposed to be like an all black Olympic, all black girl Olympic team coming up. Like that's what is rumored. You know, they may be trying to make that happen. But yeah, y'all. Oh, did I not save it? I thought I had saved it. I guess I didn't. That's embarrassing. Shout out to Jamie because I thought I had saved it. Oh, well, that's sad. We don't need to see it. You know, she, she, she ran at him. They called her. It's okay. Um, <laughs> But yes, um, at first I was kind of wondering, like, is this a situation where her lawyers were able to just you know, get him off? But it just really sounds like he might have been with them. But that doesn't mean that he actually shot somebody. You don't need much evidence for an indictment. Trial is another story. OK, so, yeah, but I'm here for the black girl magic. And I kind of don't like the way they continue to, like, put their names together as if 
this something has something because it, it, it sullies her reputation and it has nothing to do with her. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't like the way they do that. Like every time they mention him or they mention the situation there, you know, it's Simone Biles brother. No, no. Say the little nigga name. Say his name. Stop. Stop referencing him as, you know, Simone Biles brother. I don't like that shit because I feel like that, you know, adds extra like, you know, like you're saying, Janice, pressure to her. And she already has all this pressure on herself, breaking all these records, being fantastic at, you know, doing gymnastic shit, throwing herself into the air. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not easy. OK, sticking it, sticking it. You got to stick it, stick it. You got to stick it. She sticks it. She did. I think she was like one of the only women ever to do like that quadruple flip or some shit like that that she did. Yeah, they like they trying to tarnish her name. Like they trying to, you know, make her out to 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 be like, you know, I don't know what a talented hood rat. Does it fucking matter? Breaking records, bitch. <laughs> you can't do nothing about it. Okay? When she get up there and she do it, you know what I'm saying? She tied the other little black girl's hair and shit. Got her cute little boyfriend be on vacation and shit, but then come back to work and get it popping and break all the records, man. You can't, you can't smash that make. Can't smash that girl name with this foolishness. You obviously couldn't even put the, the brother in jail. So get the fuck out of here with this. Nice try, whoever, you know, racist white people tried to do this. <laughs> we assume, because there's always the man involved. You know what I'm saying? It's the man. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to another story that, <laughs> that we were talking about earlier last week. Akbar V. Okay, child. She knows she got that surgery, but she lost the weight. She lost it, girl. Look at her face. That's a nice wig application. She look good. But she always look like somebody mama that just had surgery. You know, like she is. Um, but then she be out there in them streets fighting in slow motion with her broke knees. And it's just sad. You know what I'm saying? Like Kaya out here reading you. Kaya out here looking like her red slut. Dora the Explorer. I don't even know what to call it. Like, it's just, mm, you know what I'm saying? Mm, it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like 70s prostitute, but with a geisha wig on, bitch. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Um, I know y'all seen them pictures of Kaya. Child, maybe by the end, end of this episode, if I have time, we'll go look for them. But anyway, because I wasn't planning on talking about her. I don't want her reading me for dear God on her Patreon account. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> like bitch, you don't even know me. What you gonna say? Anyway, but she she's a reader. She'll read you for anything. I right? bitch will read you for good things. Okay. Anyway, but yes, Akbar. A whole fucking week or two later, now you want to apologize, bitch. Now you want to say you sorry for calling that girl baby brain dead and saying that baby was retarded and being all politically incorrect and fucked up talking about that lady baby because she told you your ass was too old to be out here in these streets talking spit at people. You somebody mama. Yeah, you may not want to hear that, but that's the truth. That's the truth. And you trying to out Alexis Sky saying she was doing cocaine while she was pregnant. That's why her baby was fucked up. Bitch, you going to hell for that. And you apologizing because Candy must have got you on the phone and told you to stop fucking up any opportunity you ever going to have with this ignorant ass shit. OK, because you offending other people, bitch. It's not just her. Somebody must have had to get on the phone with her and have a real long conversation for her to be like this. I want to apologize for my action a couple of weeks ago. No matter what, I shouldn't have stepped out of character. I said things I shouldn't have said. So as a businesswoman, as a woman, period, I'm apologizing for anyone that I offended. I'm better than that. And I'm going to get the help I need and deserve. She announced her plans to go to therapy and said she's really about to heal herself before offering an apology to Alexis Sky, Bitch, uh, Iyala is off air. She don't want this stress trouble beat. Okay, because I know that's what you're trying to do. She didn't already mention that she wish Iyala could help her. It's too late. You need to go to a regular therapist and stop trying to make a show out of it, bitch. Okay? <sighs> no, how many, no matter how many times I go out there and get Olivia off my fucking furniture, she's still out there on my furniture. She finds a way to jump up there and go to sleep and look adorable. Like they have furniture, y'all. They have beds on. They have all kinds of stuff outside to sleep on. They don't just sleep on the ground, bougie. You know, bougie ass dogs. Anyway, y'all, I'm sorry. Back, back to this. Back to Akbar. 
She say, Lele, I apologize. And to any other special needs kids that I offended, I really apologize for that. No matter what says something, no matter who says something to me first, I should have handled that situation, you know. She should have handled that situation, I guess, differently. Y'all remember she hawked that spit at that girl. That shit was crazy. Was spit her around the world, bitch. Ugh. What kind of shit going on with you? You must give sloppy toppy out here with that spit. Ugh. Ugh. That's nasty. That's disgusting. Why you do that? Ugh. He spit at that girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? Akbar talking about anyone's kids is a joke. She can't even help keep hers. Child, exactly. 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 That's why that comment that Alexis made hit her so hard. Because she don't even have her kids. <laughs> Bitch, do you know where they at? OK, do you know if they somewhere being fucked over by somebody? Are you aware? Can you do anything about it? Or are you too busy worrying about fighting bitches in the middle of the street or who coming to Atlanta as if Atlanta is somewhere to go? I saw a post today before I came up here that said that Atlanta is not like a place to go, like for travel. I'm like, I don't know what y'all thought y'all was going to get when y'all went there. Like, it's not a sightseeing place. It's somewhere you go for specific things like Freaknik. Freak Nick is coming back, y'all. Freak Nick, Freak Nick 2021 is coming back with a vengeance. The prices have been cut in half and they're even bigger artists and they've extended it to three days, okay? Three days of outdoor fuckery, okay? And a whole bunch of sexual assault and drugging, okay? Drugging and, and, and sucking and fucking. It's gonna be terrible. I wanna go. We almost died. I wanna go. <laughs> Papi Boudet, Papi Boudet. Lyric, I feel like we should go to Freaknik, bruh. We should go to Freaknik. Get your calendars out because Atlanta's Freaknik, Freaknik Festival is returning with a three day event this October, nigga. The festival, y'all, Lyric's birthday is in October. The festival first started in 83. Okay, we, we are aware. Um, they returned in 2019. Um, but now they coming back for 2021. Okay. But y'all know why 2020 was a, was, you know, COVID couldn't go nowhere, do nothing. Okay. But Freak Nick is set to return October 8th through 10th at Morris Brown college. Hopefully they got their accreditation back all from all those years ago. Some of the larger names of the 2021 lineup include Ray J. Okay. Ray J is going to be there. Oh, is he going to be a host? I hope he don't sing. And then little Scrappy's going to be there, okay? Young Merlot in the building, okay? Okay? Field Mob, come on. I like that. And Adina Howard, I'll be a freak until the day, until the dawn. So we can whoop, whoop, all through the night to the early morn. On against the lean. Cause we can fuck fuck any time of day. It's all good for me. Why y'all moving kind of low? Oh, oh, there you go. All right, I'm going to stop. Um, the tickets will be available beginning Monday, June 21st at 9 a.m. It is currently unclear how much the Freaknik tickets will be. However, the festival's official website, they wrote in 2021, we have cut prices in half, added bigger artists, and expanded to three days. Like I told y'all. So... Yes. I know, like we went or something. Like nigga didn't go to that shit. Like the fuck, I'm not trying to get drugged and raped. Fuck. I, I'm excited though. I think it's gonna be dope. <laughs> I honestly would like to go. I would like to go see the shows. Like I think no matter what, live shows are a good time. In a way, we didn't been locked up. Okay, the way we didn't been locked up, girl. <laughs> I, I definitely feel like we can go and have us a good time laughing at Ray J and, you know, making googly eyes at young Merlot. Y'all know I like Scrappy. <laughs> Hold up. Do it on the tip. In the motherfucking city, Gwells. Ain't hey, Okay, hold up, y'all. I'm trying to uh, put something up here to answer a question that is in the comments. Um, hold up. 
All right, we're gonna leave that to download. All right, okay. All right, so after Akbar, y'all, let's talk about Saweetie. Saweetie is bringing up a topic of conversation that I find very interesting. So y'all know how Quavo broke up. And then when they broke up, apparently he got this bitly he gave her repossessed and then he put it in some lyrics that because she was slimy and sneaky, sneaky, that he was taking back that bitly, bitly. And I was just kind of like, sir, do better next time because that was whack. Um, second of all, I don't like when y'all try to dress women down slimy. She slimy, my nigga. She slimy now. Sweetie, sweetie. Gabrielle Union's little cousin is slime. Word, your mama. Anyway, um, they say he repossessed the car and she didn't exactly answer that question, but she said, I mean, if it's mine, it's mine. And I wanted to speak on that because I wanted to know, are any of y'all crazy enough to think once you give somebody a gift, they have to give it back to you because you upset? Are any of y'all crazy enough to think that? Bitch, get out of my face. <laughs> Nigga, you repossessed that car because you didn't buy it. You were leasing it. And no, you don't want to continue to pay a bill on a car that some other girl that you're not fucking with no more is driving. So take your car back because sweetie can drive her Tesla. Okay. <laughs> One of the many that she probably can get. Okay. She can buy her own car. But that's some bitch made shit. And if I was the next bitch knowing all of these things that have happened, if he ever bought me a car, if he ever bought me a car, I'd be like, I want it in my name and I want it paid in full so that you can't take it back when you get upset. And if that's not the case, you can keep your LaFonky fucking car. Because transportation is transportation, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, my Toyota going to get me there just as good as this Bentley going to get me there. Like, it'll be okay. My name is Petty Tendergrass, tow truck and root. Legally, Leo, first of all, why would you be buying a nigga a car? Can you talk to me about that? <laughs> I'm just saying, why would you do that? Because you love him? Oh. Don't give nobody nothing that you wouldn't give to them if y'all are broken up. I'm just saying. Don't do that. There are things that are ours and there are things that I give someone for them to have. That's for them. You don't ask for shit back because y'all broke up. Unless it's an engagement ring because that's something that's given, you know, with the, the contract of a marriage happening. Once a marriage is not happening anymore, yeah, it, it, would, it would behoove you to just give somebody a ring back. Um, legally, you have to do that in a lot of places. But yeah, I, I feel like niggas is out here tripping, you know, stingy ass energy. Like, take your little car, bitch. Take your little car, bitch. Don't nobody care a bit. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. <sighs> Y'all, we talking about Chrissy Teigen again. So, while Chrissy Teigen is no stranger to internet criticism amid her outspoken posts and tweets, her husband, John Legend, is now being... And called out as well now weren't we just talking about this yesterday and i said how long we gonna see chrissy teigen out here being a, a complete troll and asshole and you know questioning her tyler's and tiara's tweets and not looking at john legend like what type of nigga is you you married to this bitch you didn't procreate it with her her and her forehead so what type of nigga is you you know what i'm saying um, so he trended online this morning, just hours after Chrissy Teigen apologized for her history of bullying, uh, bullying others online. I am not reading that shit. Miss me. She said, I won't ask for forgiveness, only your patience and tolerance. I ask that you allow me, as I promise to allow you to own past mistakes and be given the opportunity to seek self-improvement and change. Phew, a lot. I know. Thanks for listening. Yeah, no. Didn't do none of that. Um, didn't read half of that. Um, but yeah, people were like, what the fuck? Like, somebody check on John Legend. Is he okay? John, are you okay? John, are you okay? You know? As, hold on, wait. John just posted a whole bunch of hearts. Okay, that's what he posted. He posted a tweet with some hearts. <laughs> Child, they a mess. They a mess, okay? But I think it's funny that that's what was trending online. And I just said that shit yesterday. Were y'all here? 
Will y'all hear when I said that shit? Oh, you he re -shiesty? Oh, that doesn't surprise me. Thank you, Joseph Felton. Hey, Bondi, love the blonde, look very badass. P.S. Everyone, please like the video. You know you want to. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate that. How much you want to bet she be beating John ass at home, slapping the shit out of him? That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Child, her forehead and his forehead together, they got a 20. <laughs> <laughs> we the people ain't giving a shit girl bye there is a lot to be said about the company you keep ain't it though yes i heard you buying the oh you was here oh you was here okay okay so y'all know y'all know that he, people be listening to me and then going on twitter <laughs> they don't watch my video and then take your ass to twitter and don't bring up that you got that shit for me that's all right that's all right. It's okay. You'll be back. Yeah, let's move on to Michael Costello. I'm trying to see because I only have one. I'm, I'm only having one bar right now and it's not moving. So um, I'm trying to close some tabs. Uh, oh, is this shit? Is this shit really? Mm. Okay. Um, let's close that. Um, is it, is it, are we having any issues? You guys let me know on your end before I continue on. Cause I don't want to like start talking and then some dumb shit happens. Um, I'm about to load this little video though. Cause I'm going to post this, um, in the video. So I want to have it here, but we're about to move on to Michael Costello because he's in trouble because of Chrissy Teigen. Are we good? Okay. So Michael Costello thought he was going to have a victim moment. He thought he was going to speak out about how Chrissy Teigen caused him so much trauma. And she, you know, had him depressed and he wanted to kill himself all because she called him a racist after he allegedly called a black lady a nigga. And it's not even really alleged because we've seen the evidence. Okay. Okay. But he went on and on talking about all of the trauma that he went through because of her. Oh, I really didn't want to do this. Then he posted text messages showing that he, well, actually DMs showing that he tried to talk to her, but she was just like, your career's over, asshole. Okay, you can go to hell with the rest of the racists. And it's like, you know, when you're out here kneeling people to the cross, you got to make sure that you're not a fucking demon. OK, you got to make sure you're not a demon yourself because Chrissy Teigen and Michael Costello are both two of the same. Two of the same. Like y'all both have done this same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like Chrissy Teigen, I don't think she ever plays victim, but I definitely think you want sympathy from people. You want people to feel bad for you. You want people to empathize with you. You want people not to hate you and not see you as a mean girl who spends her time trolling. You were a fucking model. When did you have time to troll people, Chrissy Teigen? What the fuck? Like, I don't have time to troll people and I'm just a YouTuber. How did your famous ass have time to be out here trolling people? She was a model for years. How did you have time to be out here trolling people? That is sad. What type of person are you? Insecure and attention seeking, I guess. But so is Michael Costello. Okay. I could not take him actually writing this like whole drawn out message about how she had him out here about to kill himself because she called him a racist. Sir, if you felt bad because there were consequences involved with the way you treated black people, that's your fault. That's what happens. It's called consequences and repercussions. See, what people don't seem to understand is that, yes, cancel culture is somewhat of, of, of bullshit, okay? Because some people, y'all be trying to cancel and you can't really cancel them. But then there are some of y'all that say and do things and you should be reprimanded. You should not continue to be able to make money off of people. You should not continue to be able to be successful if you think you can go around disrespecting people because of the color of their skin, like calling people nigger bitches. I think the fuck not. And if you had to answer for that behavior, so be it. Just like Chrissy Teigen having to answer for her behavior. You had to answer for yours. 
And you don't get to now get up here and claim to be some fucking victim and you were about to kill yourself and all of this. Miss me with that shit. But you didn't, did you? Okay, then. All right, let's talk about how he treated this black designer. Okay, just hours after designer Michael Costello slammed Chrissy Teigen for bullying him, he's being accused of calling a black female designer the N-word. As previously reported, Chrissy apologized on and on and on. Okay, on and on and on and on and on. Pull up, I had to scroll. Now he's being called out for calling a designer a, a racial slur. Designer Maxie J shared a message in her stories and recalled an encounter she had with Michael Costello in a fabric store. She said she beat him up and almost went to jail after he called her the N word. Okay. Hollywood Unlock reposted the stories where she explained that he called her a black nigga bitch in a fabric store downtown. He had the wrong one. Okay. She didn't know what to do with whoop his ass. That's all she knew what to do with whoop his ass. Okay. And then later on, Michael Costello is online telling someone you just probably a dumb nigger defending her. First of all, your it's probably it's your with the R E, not with the O U R, but okay, Michael. He said you're just probably a dumb nigger defending her. I am royalty, bitch. I dress Beyonce. Who are they gonna believe? Uh, sir, do you not know who black ass Beyonce is? I hate when people want to use a black person to bolster themselves while simultaneously using the very language that has plagued them as a black person all of their existence on, on this earth. All of our existence, we've all dealt with like racial insensitivities, just the racial shit period. We have to deal with that. You think Beyonce is exempt? Beyonce is a black girl that grew up in Texas. Energy like his definitely has affected her in a negative way in her life as a black person. So the fact that you think that you can use her to make yourself important and then turn around and call another black woman a nigga bitch, you shouldn't work again, sir. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. They shouldn't want to work with you. You shouldn't be able to make money off black people after speaking to people in that way. Not only that, but Leona Lewis came out and said that he was supposed to design a dress for her when she was walking in a charity, a charity fashion show. OK, and he was supposed to make a dress for her. But instead. He shows up with this dress to fit some skinny bitch that was smaller than her and then wouldn't change the dress to fit her like he said he would. Didn't show up. And then when she didn't walk, she had to explain why she didn't walk. And I like how she started out hers. I usually don't speak on subjects like this. It's very similar to the way that he, you know, started his statement with that old fake humble shit. I feel like she knew very much she was about to gut punch that ass. And I'm glad she did. I'm glad she did. I think it's well deserving. I think if multiple people, because not just him, let me go to my Instagram so we can pull up the makeup artist that said that he sexually assaulted him while he was going through chemo. Yeah, let's pull that up, Michael Costello, since you want to cry and be a victim. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Child, Michael Costello is one of those situations where if, if you're not black, you're white. Side of so many situations. I remember, um, oh, by the way, Michael Costello called out Chrissy Teigen this week for cyberbullying and has everybody pissed at her. Meanwhile, he sexually harassed me while I was going through chemotherapy. Uh, the gloves are off. I think today I was just so triggered, not only by the news of Michael Costello playing the victim card, but, um, you know, these brands in my DMs that just accept the meeting just randomly he sends me like a collage of dick pics. Not like one, like a pig stitch of like a bunch of different angles. And I'm like, is this guy for real? I'm no prude, but can we just normalize? It's like, if people send you pictures like that without your consent, that should be considered a form of harassment or assault in and of itself. Oh yeah. Cause uh, ain't nobody trying to see that. So I didn't know what to say. And I felt immediately very uncomfortable and side. He's pretty, isn't he? Um, But yes, it's just, <laughs> it's like, boy, if you don't wanna sit down some damn wear, 
Stupid ass. Okay, so let's move on from Michael Costello. I've had enough. Um, y'all. So what's going? What's going on I with Soldier? I was in the trenches, bro. I really was talking about nothing. Why am Zero I laughing? In the trenches in Atlanta, Seltzer Road, bro. To be a millionaire. Don't speak on where I'm from. You don't know my story. You don't know me. You don't know nothing. <laughs> you don't know me. me. I'm not Soldier. Power. Since I was a kid, I was in the street selling crack. Oh, I'm not one of these rappers, bro. Ooh, I'm not. No, What's up with this hair? I've been rich my whole life. We know. I we heard you. On TV. We we got there. it. We know. We was here. Calm down, sir. Calm I down. You are gonna hurt school. yourself. You look sick. I really shot. I really sold. Okay. Dope. Oh, okay. Y'all Stop. You're incriminating. Soldier, me. you're incriminating yourself. I really was in the trenches, bro. Really Soldier, you're, you're, snap, you're incriminating bro. yourself. And he's still getting money. He's that Crow Anderson. He's right. Yeah. yeah. And EDM. He went EDM. Yeah. Now. You ain't gonna put Soldier Boy in there? No, man. Soldier's like from Atlanta. I'm gonna start this. Soldier Boy started going. So that's what prompted this? I really was in the trenches, bro. <laughs> I really was broke. This nigga's on drugs, bro. Zero. Are you it's on it or are you selling it? Cicero. Bro. Cicero. Don't speak on where I'm from. You don't know my story. You don't know me. I feel bad for laughing because I feel like this is us watching somebody like have a nervous breakdown. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a meme. It's going to be a meme. Like they're gonna cut it up, and whenever we mad about something, they're gonna be like, "Bro, I was in the trenches." <laughs> it's gonna be a meme, okay? Like honestly, you know what it's a meme for? It's a meme for this lady's experience on the job. I'm so horrified at what the news business has has stooped to. Tell us about it. My news room kind of groups everyone into racial groups. Oh. <laughs> That happened where you work too? Oh, I see similarities. And she has decided that poor black people don't care about Bitcoin. Mm. Look at history. It is so important to keep that loyalty to the viewers and to the truth. I appreciate that, white lady. I appreciate that. Ivory Hecker. Girl, you knew they was going to fire you. You weren't going to keep your job, but you knew that. Don't nobody want that job. Fuck that job. Fuck them people. I'm excited about the verses tonight. I'm definitely going to be in the building. Uh, this is what I've been waiting for. I don't know. Can y'all tell me how many of y'all have heard me say that it should be Eve and Trina? I've said it several times. I've literally said it. And I hope that they do Gangsta Bitch. I really, really do. Yes, they have a song together. I hope that they do it. Okay? Gangsta Bitch. Gangsta Ice. Gangsta Whips. Gangsta. Gangsta money, gangsta shows, gangsta purse, gangsta shoes, gangsta verse. We the bitches that the gangsta thirst, gangsta song, gangsta wrong, gangsta thong. Uh, we the bitches that the gangsta song, gangsta bottle, gangsta Trina, gangsta Bray, gangsta Eve, Miss Perina, Trina the M I A bitch. Them I play with any, mini mighty mo picking basically the richest nigga for the baddest bitch. So it's gonna be hard for me to choose, y'all. It's really gonna be hard. Um, because like literally the first two CDs that I bought as a as a you know a preteen, like 12, 13, the first time I had my own money to buy my own CD, it was Eve's Let There Be Eve. That was the very first album that I ever bought with my own money. And Trina's was like one of the ones that I probably shouldn't have been listening to, but the baddest bitch song played so hard, the video played so hard that I had to get the album. I had to get the album. And then the album cover with her on top, the dude on top, the gurney. You know what I'm saying? Like it's an emergency and Trina's on top. Nigga, you still gonna die because it's about me. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I I was there, y'all. I was there. Okay, I have all of Eve's albums and I have the first, the, I know the first three Trina albums. Okay, after that, I fell off. But those first three, Baddest Bitch, Diamond Princess, uh, what, what was the other one? The Fabulous Life. I can't remember what the other one was. 
Um, but if you play the songs, I know the shit. Okay. So I'm excited about tonight. So excited. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go live or if I'm just, I might, I'm gonna see if Jay Lee, you know, want me to come on hers. Cause if I, if she go live, cause I know she going live tonight. And last time, uh, you know, I was on there with her for a little while. So I might go on her live for a little while and talk about it in full on the Bondi Blue Show tomorrow. Um, but yes, I am so excited. And I hope, you know, y'all be there too so we can talk about it tomorrow for the Bondi Blue Show. I do have one more topic before we move, you know, on, before we leave. Is this, this movie, In the Heights, have y'all seen them talking about how there's not enough afro latina population in this movie the heights is a musical you know it has uh john chu as the director uh melissa barrera leslie grace and gregory diaz the fourth okay gregory diaz the fourth we've been seeing him all over the place he was actually in um he was in she's gotta have it the show he played mookie um but people have been complaining about the fact that it's a, a, a movie about Latinas and there are no Afro Latinas as if there are no Afro Latinas in, in New York. And it's like there are definitely Afro Latinas in the Heights. And we're talking about dark complected brown black people that are also Latino because they are from Isles in the Latinas. OK, the Espanols. OK, Puerto Rico, Cuba. All right. They're from places where people speak Spanish. OK. <laughs> All right. But. It says um, now Miranda, the director, has responded to the criticism. And he said that I hear that without sufficient dark, I hear that without sufficient dark skinned Afro Latina representation, the work feels extractive of the community we wanted so much to represent with pride and job. I'm learning from the feedback. I thank you for raising it and I'm listening. That's a cute response. That's a cute response. But what are you? No, I, that, that must not have been Barrera. That must have been Chu. I don't know. I thought that was the, the, the director, John M. Chu. No, Lynn manuel Miranda reacts to the In the Heights we fell short. Okay, so it's multiple responses here. Okay, Lynn Manuel Miranda is the actor, and he's speaking out, and he said he was, you know, they fell short. Child, I don't know who said what at this point. I don't know who's who because I don't be knowing nobody no more. <laughs> I just know he is, is Mookie, okay, and he be on that, uh, the Crown Royal commercial. Um, Hell yeah, you welcome to come on my version live tonight. Send the photo. I need to send a photo, bitch, so you can make a, you got to make a new thumbnail. I can't just come on. Like, you are getting out of hand with this. <laughs> Y'all, Jay Lee is about her business. She really makes us uh, step our game up. She really does. But I swear to God, I wish she would let me not be in the thumbnail. Just, just this once. Just let me come. <laughs> I don't want you to make a whole new thumbnail for me, bitch. Because <laughs> they don't know the culture, period. All Hollywood-ish. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Also, what made you think we wanted a fucking musical? I mean, I'm not Latina. I'm not ever Latina or nothing like that. But you know, like, who wanted a musical? Anthony Ramos is the one you're speaking of. Thank you, because I feel like I don't know nobody's names. Like, I don't know. They putting pictures up of all these people, and I have no idea what the fuck we're talking about. But the person who was speaking looked Latina, okay? So you're in the community, but you don't understand? I have not watched Blind Spotting. Y'all know what I want to watch? I want to watch whatever this witchy show, this witchy show that they got on Freeform with uh, Demetria McKinney. It looks interesting. <laughs> Where's Jay Lee went? <laughs> oh, shit. Why she gonna curse me out in the DMs? <laughs> Bitch, I need my shit to be nice and professional. <laughs> In the Heights was really big on Broadway. Okay, the musical came out over 10 years ago. Now it's moved. Okay, got you, got you, got you. I was asking who asked for that. Um, the Heights is literally a black Latino neighborhood. There are not a lot of white and indigenous Latinos there. 
child i know i know who live up there that's why i was like child who this supposed to be <laughs> y'all get some latino people that's already been in some shit and put them in a movie and then that's supposed to be enough representation the, the truth of the matter is only the lighter complected latinas really make it anyway so y'all using people we've already seen is just kind of like you weren't really trying to represent nobody you weren't really trying to you know represent anybody yes cruel summer ending cruel I, I i watched some of it but i didn't watch the whole episode but i watched the part that i needed to watch the part that explained everything um i'm not reviewing cruel summer i just watched it but i was thoroughly enthralled and the fact that that bitch did not see her but she heard her and she left that girl in that basement and she did all of this crazy shit like somebody should have killed that little girl I feel bad for her family, but somebody should have killed. Uh, what was her name, y'all? Janelle. What was her name? Somebody should have killed her. The ending when she heard her screaming for help and she just smiled and, and walked out. I was like, stab, 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 stab. Y'all, you know, it's really hard for me to break up with Gina Rodriguez because I really loved her. Like, I love Jane the Virgin. That was still one of my favorite shows. Jeanette. Yes, Jeanette. Stab, stab, stab. Stab, 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 Jeanette. So disappointed. Was in shock, right? I was like, really, bitch? No, it's on Freeform and it's on Hulu. Cruel Summer is a really excellent show if you guys haven't watched it. It's really good. It'll confuse the shit out of you. But if you can just watch it all at once, you'll be amazed. Them Dominicans in Washington Heights are your color and brown. I know. They got Dominicans here that's darker than me. That's just as brown as me. Motherfucker, they got Vietnamese people. That's browner to me. That's the same color as me. That's why I just kind of be looking at people sometimes like, y'all keep acting like this shit means something and all it really means is the sun likes me more. <laughs> the sun likes me more, bitch. That's all this means. Okay. No, she really was kidnapped, but it didn't start out that way. Or... It was, but it wasn't. Like, it, it's the weird thing when dudes kidnap girls and fuck them. It becomes like a situation where they need something to make them feel good. So they start to look at that person and, you know, they love that person in some way because it's all they have. You know what I'm saying? That's the only person that they see. It's the only good feeling that they do feel. And, and you know, he was drugging her and fucking her and shit. Like, it was all kind of shit going on. But it was definitely a kidnap situation. But she's a teenage girl that's been kidnapped. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's definitely Stockholm Syndrome and a whole bunch of other syndromes that I know not of. But it's, it's definitely on some bullshit. Yeah, man. Look, I would love if we could see all shades of people. But then that would make y'all stop uh, acting like black people don't exist in all those other national, all those other ethnicities and nationalities. Stockholm syndrome. Okay, like trafficking. It wasn't really like trafficking because he just had her in his basement. Like he, they had started a relationship before he was grooming her, and um, she ran away from home. And I think he was staying with her, or well, she was staying with him, because she ran away from home. And then one day, I think maybe she wanted to leave, or they got into it, and then he throws her ass in the basement and doesn't let her leave. So yeah. Demetria McKinney is called Motherland for Salem. Yes. Yes. She looked like a strong ass witch in it. And I want to see it. I love when Demetria McKinney gets to be badass. She does really good badass facial expressions. Okay. I rewatched Beauty and the Beast with my son. It's low key Stockholm syndrome, too. It is. Falling in love with no motherfucking beast because he told you you couldn't leave his house. The fuck? Same thing. Moral of the story love yourself. For his teenagers, so you won't end up first teenage, so you won't end up in a situation like the Carol and Cruel Summer. Yes, but also parents don't be so self absorbed that you're not paying attention to your the emotions of your children. Like that girl was supposedly so close with her mom, and her mom was an asshole. Her mom wasn't paying attention to shit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying parents gonna always be able to get everything, but she was too busy cheating on her fucking husband and blaming her daughter for her marital issues. Like. It was a whole bunch of crazy shit going on. Nick Cannon's twin boys have been born. Oh, more 
more more cheering. That's what's up. Congratulations. Healthy babies into the world. All those Disney stories are high key problematic. And one day we're going to talk about that. Let me write that down. <laughs> Because that's not like a good video. Let's talk about how these motherfucking Disney movies are problematic. Okay. I'm going to write that down and we're going to do, we're going to do a video about that one day. Okay. Problem. I got to get these things when they come to me, <laughs> but I'm going to go now so we can all get ready for Eve and Trina. I love y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed the show today. I know it wasn't like the most of the the, the, the topics of the blogs and all of that, but I gave y'all what I had to give y'all. And my stomach was hurting a little bit halfway through when I pushed. I sure did. Feeling good right now. <laughs> but uh, let's see how long that lasts. I love you guys. I hope y'all enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Reach 100,000, bitch. These numbers are back up. I'm like, see, you two be on bullshit with the, with the algorithm situation. Thank you, Jason Edmonds. I, I appreciate the super chat. I will watch anything with you and my good sis together. Love you, Jay Lee. Yes. Don't we have such good chemistry? All of us do. If y'all, like, when I tell y'all, it's hard to find people you click with. But it's a whole nother thing to find a group of women that you can work with to the point that everybody add something and then one person can say the littlest thing and then eat you know we all take it and run with it and it just escalates and you know gets better and better because we're all kind of like putting our thoughts all in the same place and it allows for each of us to like improve on that thought in, in some way and it's just it's amazing it's amazing I am I'm very appreciative of, of them finding them us working together. I don't get along with a lot of females and I love them. Um, so yeah, I appreciate it. And I hope I'll see y'all tomorrow for the ladies first panel on Nisi's channel. So, oh wait. And before we go, I'm going to show y'all, this is the list of shows that I review. Oh, this is the list. All American, 911, This Is Us, Run the World, Power Book 2, Ghost, Love and Marriage Huntsville, which is about to start. Love and Hip Hop, all franchises. Atlanta is about to start. Real Housewives of Atlanta, you guys know that. Real Housewives of Potomac is about to start. After that, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Married to Medicine is about to go away, but you know I reviewed that. Jocelyn's Cabaret and Baddies, I reviewed that. Love After Lockup is about to start again. I reviewed that as well. Sisters on BET, I reviewed that along with Encore on BET. I had stopped for a minute, but now that I have another show on Wednesday nights that is also on BET and I watch it for Sisters, I mean for the ladies first panel, it just made sense to add Sisters and Encore and do them together. So I usually do those on Wednesday, uh, on Thursdays for the Wednesday nights or whatever. Married at First Sight, it will be coming back as well in July, I believe. Put a ring on it. Also about to come back. I reviewed that. Ready to Love. We're currently reviewing. Um, but you know, there will be further seasons of Ready to Love. But I review Ready to Love. Black Ink Crew. We're currently in Black Ink Crew. I review that. Growing Up Hip Hop. I also review that. We are currently in Growing Up Hip Hop. And um, I've been reviewing the LA one because I like that one better. I don't really like Atlanta. It's kind of boring to me. So I only do the original Growing Up uh, Hip Hop LA. So uh, those are the shows that I review. All right. Um, will I review American Horror Story? I'm not sure yet. It just depends. The Versus comes on like in seven or eight minutes. So we're going to go now. But I love you guys. I just wanted to, you know, let y'all know what was up and press on. I'll be updating the list as time goes on. So if I, I haven't seen Family or Fiance put out anything recently that i can recall but that is one of the shows that i did review so if it does come back i will add it to the list and i will update you guys and let you know i'll start putting them at the beginning or you know the ends of the lives whatever just so it's you know like the ads so you guys are always abreast to what's going on and what you can expect so that y'all don't always ask me about shows that i'm already reviewing just because somehow y'all haven't seen it so you know just to be a little bit more clear and transparent. Um, I stopped doing Queen Sugar because it was just too much. And we were talking about it in a ladies first panel. So I decided to leave it there um, instead of doing it on my own channel. 
I don't feel like I'm going to review Motherland for Salem, but I'm definitely going to watch it. And you can expect for me to, you know, maybe I'll do something ever so often. But I'm the weekly shows, those are the weekly shows. Everything else is, you know, kind of like maybe. Um, yeah, definitely check out my baddies and uh, Jocelyn's Cabaret reviews because I do those together and they're screenshots. So, yeah. But I love you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I will see y'all on Jay Lee's channel tonight. Hopefully if I don't, you know, get sick again. So, but my plan is to be there.